we're on. Rise and shine and welcome to the ASOM experience. How amazing it is to be live again today. Thank you for being part of the ASOM experience. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for listening, whatever you're connecting from. I am proud and happy and thankful to know that you're from over 25 countries taking the time to connect whatever you're doing, whether you're driving, walking your dog at the gym, cooking, anything you're doing, thank you for being here. You're doing this first and foremost for you. And then you're doing this as well to contribute to this community of interesting guests and speakers and topics that we share ideas the goal here is not to tell you that everything you hear or listen to is exactly the truth or the the absolute answer or key to your questions or to your life issues or problems i I hope not the goal here is really for you to connect and to to maybe grab a few words, a few phrases, some stories, some experiences that could inspire you and resonate with you. So that being said, thank you again for taking the time. I'm happy to have this time again with me an interesting guest. And he's come all the way from the US. He's currently based in France in the French Riviera, where I had the chance to meet him a few weeks ago through Um, a language speaking event which is hosted by a friend of mine and we ended up sitting together both of us and getting very deep into talks about personal development self-help and growth so with me is Jared who is currently doing an exchange program in the University of Nice, and he has a bunch of stories and enough ideas to share with us. So uh, very interesting. Let's uh, welcome Jared uh, with us and uh, listen to him. Hey. Hi, thanks for having me. Good afternoon <laughs> or good morning, depending when you're listening to this. And I'm, I'm very glad to be here today. Wonderful, Jared. I, I have to mention as well that uh, I was really very thankful and, and, and happy to receive Jared's email uh, after he listened to uh, to the ASOM experience, he sent me an email. It was so generous and kind of him, first of all, to acknowledge the work that's being done, the value of the content that's being shared, and also to go deeper into that sort of um, talks, conversations, and ideas that we share. So the reason why Jared is also here is because he is truly uh, an advocate of personal development. So tell us a little bit more about your story, Jared, and why are you here today? Yes, yeah, sort of a, a, a long quest to get me here, and I didn't really know that everything was going to come together at first, but I'm a student back in the United States. I, I study philosophy in French, and initially I, I always wanted to do study abroad, but I didn't really have the chance because of coronavirus, and for a while I, I really didn't think I was going to go. And then a couple of months ago, it sort of re-entered my mind, and Initially, I had plans to go to Brussels because I really, I love Belgium and I thought it would be a great place to go. And I was learning French, but I thought, you know, to to protect myself, I wanted to do a program through my school that was already set up. And I saw that they had a program called Maryland and Nice. I I didn't really know anything about Nice at all, but I sort of signed up for it on a whim because I I figured why not, you know, just take a leap and then see what happens. And somehow we ended up here. Uh, Originally, the program coordinator told me just quite bluntly, I don't think it's going to happen. You're probably not going. And he was seemed quite confident about that. So I really am kind of surprised that I am here today. Um, and more or less everything that's happened since I got here has been whimsical in nature. I've sort of just mm-hmm. allowed myself to go where I felt like I should go. Even that night with the French conversational hour, when I met you, it was something I was, you know, maybe uncertain about at first. I didn't know felt uncomfortable going but I just decided to go anyway and it turned out to be a really great time and you know now I'm here today so that's mm. a, a very brief history of you know, how <laughs> I, I got myself here to this moment fantastic fantastic Jared well uh well done well done also in taking that leap what you just mentioned that leap of faith that leap of braveness and 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 you know leaving your country I mean it reminds me of, of my story and story of many many um similar like-minded I would say stories of of young men and women who who just leave their countries and go abroad to 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 first of all I think 
kind of leave their comfort zone and also get confronted with new situations, new cultures, new mentalities. And that I think that is really a piece of um, something to be proud of. So um, fantastic. I'm sure you've, uh, you've been through some quite interesting experiences. Tell us a little bit more about you and what motivates you to get up in the morning and, and start your day? Yeah, I think that motivation is something that isn't really constant for a lot of people. But for me, I've always sort of had a weird drive, uh, a, a sort of urge, a feeling that I need to do, to do something important. And sometimes it can be like neuroticism, it can take an unhealthy forms. And, and then other times it can be a really passionate sort of loving driving spirit in, inside of me that you know, gets me to get up and live my day with confidence, with vitality. And so I think part of my objective, at least in introspection and in understanding myself better is to know where that source comes from and to be able to delineate when it's healthy and when it's obsessive. But I would say that somewhere in my adolescence, I started to realize that I wasn't really taking advantage of my full potential. I did well in school, but I wasn't an excellent student when I was you know, 15 or 16. I was quite lazy. I didn't really do my homework. I didn't seem to care about much of anything. And I sort of had this, this realization that I had a lot of potential and I would be an idiot not to take advantage of it. It would actually be quite selfish of me not to pursue my dreams and to use all the gifts and the privileges that I have to their full extent. So pretty much since then, I would say around that age, it's been my mission at least to improve myself, to take advantage of all the experiences life has to offer me and to develop my discipline. And so I've had various projects over the years that have helped me practice that. And I think that have brought me a lot of confidence in myself and in my ability to trust in my intuitions and to work hard every day. And so I would say probably what gets me up in the morning is just knowing that there's a really beautiful future ahead and that, that, that life is beautiful and it's worth living. And that it's only such a short amount of time that I, I would be I would be silly to just sit in my bed and scroll through Instagram or something or go back to sleep. I, I might as well just get up and get at it. You know, today, today we feast, tomorrow we die. That sort of deal. Yeah. Wow. Wow, Jared. I must say, I love your answer. I love your answers, actually, because you've, you've touched point on, on many things, many areas here that certain people take you know a long long time to get there you know in terms of you mentioned awareness like being aware of what motivates you whether it's uh, somewhere of love and of creation or somewhere of more of laziness or or you said like something that's more neurotic or other uh, but also you've mentioned like this this force this with it this force within you that really drives you to get up and, and know that life is beautiful. And it's, you know, it's really hard nowadays to tell people life is beautiful. I feel this resistance, you know, when I, I've, I've started this podcast, well, over a year ago now, and, but the ASOM state of motivation started, was, was born in 2018. And we always started by rise and shine and how amazing it is to be alive again today. And for certain people, this can be a little bit nauseous, you know, because, you know, it's hard, it's hard for certain people to get it. It's hard for certain people to really put that mindset on and say like, yeah, it is amazing to be alive. You know, I've got that chance again to be alive. Life is beautiful. There's a limited, there's a finite amount of time for us here. And what exactly the way you described it. So how do you think for, I would say, I mean, there's, there's probably a little bit of, of age difference between us and definitely other differences in terms of, in terms of, uh, you know, background, uh, I would say like culture, you know, childhood, this and that, but how would you refer to that particular, you know, area and, and situation with people who are, you know, around you right now, like in your entourage, how would you really give them that, that, that message of hope telling them that, yeah, you know, get yeah. up. Yeah. Well, it's just sort of amazing how your life can pretty much change mm. to a point where it's almost unrecognizable in an extremely short period of time. I mean, I, I would say, yes. I don't know if it really comes across now, but I mean, I'm in a very, a very happy place, but only three months ago, I was in the worst place of my life, mm. you know? So I, I think that there's, I know it's cliche to say, but it's said often because it's true. There's beauty in the struggle. And 
you can go through a really hard time. And if you're able to overcome that hard time, then it allows you to develop sort of interpersonally where you become more confident in your ability to go through hard times in the future. And then as, as you grow and mature, you learn how to sort of just accept that, yes, suffering is inevitable, but that doesn't mean that suffering is all there is, right? So in life, there is suffering, I think is a more adequate way to say that life is suffering, right? Because life is suffering mm-hmm. might sound overly pessimistic to people. You know, in life, there is suffering and there is joy, there is peace, there is love. So it, it can be hard to see that though, when, when things are really rough and it can help to have an ally. So I would say that if you are going through a really difficult time, um, try to find somebody to speak to about it because sort of putting that out into the air, it really helps a lot. And if you bottle it up, it just sort of festers and it acts like a poison and you, it will just wound you over time. So sort of keeping, keeping the negative energy in, keeping um, that, that, that pessimism, that sort of, that, that sickness, you could almost call it, um, all to yourself is, is not ultimately healthy. It can be really nice to sort of find somebody to confide in. Yeah. That's so beautiful sharing, Jared. I, I well, I'm a hundred percent with you on that. And um, it's really brave as well. It's really brave to speak out and just like say, like really reach out. If you're, if you're struggling, if you're in a hard place, reach out, ask for help. You know, a lot of people are resistant to asking for help. I think it's a matter of shame. It's a matter of ego. It's a matter of a lot of things. But um, something that I've learned, you know, as well is that um, you can never be just self-made. You can never be just, you know, that 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 individual um, who's trying to figure it out alone. You know, you we're we're living in a society where social beings and we, you know, we interact with other people. So it's um, rather than just boasting about our successes and our achievements and what we're doing, but also be vulnerable and really go and ask for help. And this is a reminder also for listeners, you know, wherever you're from, whatever, you know, your story is, your age, your situation, you know, feel, feel the urge to reach out, feel the urge to find solutions to what's blocking you because no one's going to save you. No one's going to come and, 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 you know, and get you out of bed or, or, or there's no quick fix, you know, and, and this is, yeah, this is a reminder, first and foremost, to myself, but also I take the, you know, the honor to, to share it with, with uh, fellow, fellow listeners and people watching us. So Jared, wow, um, on point, tell us, tell us a little bit more about like your past. Um, what was one of your turning points, something that maybe like turned you know, turned the story upside down and made you really, made you go that far? That's a great question. Thank you for that. I I think there's been a few, there's been a few like sort of calls um, in the past, maybe four or five years that acted as really pivotal moments in my life. I would say like the first time it ever happened was maybe when I was 16 or so. And I had that realization that I talked about earlier, but then more recently, I would say it was probably three or sort three or so months ago, um, I, I was living back at my, in the United States at my university um, in a house that I just wasn't really in great conditions there. I, I, um, it wasn't really sort of my environment. It was an unhealthy environment for me. Um, there was a lot of toxicity. It was just um, a, lot, a lot of negative energy. And um, I, I was sort of, I was in a pretty dark place. And I, it was kind of strange because in that moment, like I sort of, I reached out to a really close friend. I, I talked to him for a long time. And then um, after that, I started opening up to like my parents and other people. And uh, a bunch of really sort of crazy things happened that ended up changing my life a lot. Like um, I started going to this spiritual club that I w- thought was fun. Um, not, not you know, because I am a spiritual or a religious person per se, but I, I like spiritual practice, meditation, sure. that sort of thing. And I, I met I met somebody there by chance um, who happened to be in the same major as me, and you know she invited me to a party that I went to, and it ended up being like a really really great time. And everybody there was just super nice. They were super accepting, loving. Um, there was no sort of toxicity. There was no expectation 
you know? And I remember from our conversation, you said something about being unapologetic. It was Ooh. like, I felt like I could be unapologetic there, you know, like at the time I didn't, I didn't, I didn't drink at all and nobody cared, you know, it wasn't like anybody was trying to force a drink in my hand. Nobody even asked. It was just casual was as it was. And um, I, I realized that from that experience, things could be different. You know, the place that I live, the experiences I had before were not the standard, they weren't the norm. And I could certainly find something different that was better for me if I wanted. And then from there, I just started experiencing more, taking more risks. And it was sort of a wake up call for me. So I think I, the summary from that is that sometimes you can get trapped in a certain moment in your life where you feel like that your suffering is all there is. But if you actually take a few steps and you take a few risks where you don't know, you put yourself in the deep end, but you trust yourself, you trust that you're going to be able to swim out of it, you trust that you'll be able to latch on, you know, to some sort of anchor, then oftentimes you will, you know, you jump into that, that cliff and then you find out it's a bed of feathers. I, I, these sort of, these sort of sayings, um, they can sound sort of cliche or banal after a while, but the reason why they're said so much is because they're true, you know, and mm. if, if you take a lot of trust in yourself and you allow yourself to try to change your life, then oftentimes, even if it's not perfect, it will just be better than it was before. And you'll only have yourself to thank. So. Yes, very well said. Very, very well said. Wow. It's beautiful um, that you've trusted really, um, yeah, a complete total, maybe stranger or, or a situation or a story. And then you ended up being totally surprised with the possibilities um that that lie outside our mundane our routine or you know just being in that inside that regular daily box um wow okay um what what would jared advise his younger self like what what, what would it be something that if you look back a few years back um what would you tell yourself Don't be so shy. Don't be so reluctant. Don't be so ashamed. Yeah. I would say that it was really important for me back then to feel like I was being perceived a certain way. I mean, in high school, I was always very quiet. Um, I would say I was pretty introverted, not because I was antisocial, but just because I felt like I, I had a really specific vision of how things should be in my head. And if something wasn't perfect, you know, it was like reality. It was messy and it was... Um, less than ideal, then I sort of, um, I, re I repelled away from it. You know, I was, I was repulsed by it. Um, but, you know, things are messy, things aren't perfect. And what's in your head, the sort of beauty, the, the I idyllic state, um, whenever you try to translate that into reality, when you try to generate something novel, um, there are going to be things that are lost in translation, right? So translating thought to reality um, is, is quite, quite impossible in my philosophical opinion. I'm somebody who um, believes that language is um, not able to fully capture the content of thought, that language uh, is not able to express the ineffable. And I don't think that that's really a, a shameful thing or a sad thing. I think that it's a beautiful thing, really, and that um, you should embrace the, the inner experiences, but you should also embrace the outer experiences. So I, I would say to myself in my, my younger days, that things will change, right? That what, what was happening back then was, was only temporary and that um, I shouldn't be ashamed to want something else. And if I take those steps that everything's gonna turn out okay, right? And, and you mentioned earlier that we're social creatures. Back then I definitely didn't accept that enough. Mm. Like, you know, when I was a really young kid, I was super sociable, but then sort of through my adolescence, I was a lot more, more introverted, more shy. And then really since I've been here in France, a lot of that has changed, right? I noticed that I'm meeting a lot more people, going to a lot more events, putting myself out there. And it's, it's been amazing. So I would, I would also say to myself, you know, put yourself out there. Um, don't, don't feel, you know, ashamed or fearful of rejection because rejection happens, but it's not, it's not the standard, right? Mm. Yeah. Well done, Jared. I, um, one of the things that really, got me smiling and, and just thinking was the fact that you said some some ideas or situations or, or the mind cannot be really put in words and language and 
You know, what I truly believe is that energy doesn't lie. And that I keep saying to people who I meet for the first time, I tell them energy doesn't lie. You know, you don't, you don't have to hear me. You don't have to, I don't have to say anything to make you think in any particular way. Like you can feel it, you can sense it. And I believe that we all have that, you know, that capacity of, 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 you know, connecting with someone else's energy if we allow ourselves, if, uh, if we've done, you know, the, the, the least of work uh, to be there. And um, it's, it's also great to hear your story and how, how you went from, you know, being very young to then a little bit more introverted and now opening up again. Um, that's definitely, yeah, I think there's a big message here to um, anyone who's going through or who has been or who has gone through similar situations and um, so yeah you said just don't be don't be shy or don't be ashamed to be yourself what else would you like practically in terms of tools and actions what would you tell someone who's going through something or who has gone through something similar I don't know if there's a specific rule book for how to like get yourself out there more, but I would say maybe start journaling and then write the things that you're fearful yes. about, right? And yeah. then reflect on those entries. And if those are things that are natural fears that everybody has, ignore them, right? Like don't write down that you're afraid of, I don't know, um, a car accident or something, but do write down that you're afraid of talking to some person that you met at work or at the cafe and then um just try to face those fears try try to go do them and don't tackle everything at once but maybe try to reach one point per week or some some arbitrary time frame set yourself a little a little goal to have for the week like yeah. okay um i'm going to meet one new person this week or i'm going to go to this new activity this new club and and just have that one goal don't, don't take off too much. Don't bite off too much at once. And then have that experience and then write a bit after and see how before you built up probably all these, these insecurities, these doubts and anxieties. And then after a lot of the things that you feared just simply didn't happen to be true, or if they were true, they didn't matter. Right. So mm -hmm. I think that it can really help to see how your brain will sort of create obstacles for you and prevent you from doing things that you might really enjoy when, in fact, after you do those things, even if they were difficult, it ends up not being as bad as you anticipated. Totally. Wow. Oof. Uh, you, yeah, you, you just um, spoke about journaling, and it's something we've discussed already in our first uh, conversation when we met. And it's, um, journaling was also definitely um, one of our past i mean recent topics on the podcast and it was one of one of really the tools and the tips to having a an exciting and more productive 2022 um it's definitely something that's being more and more adopted today and used because um, we've lost that habit of writing down our thoughts and our feelings and everything is translated into I don't know, selfies, and um, <laughs> I'm taking that example, but it's just yeah. <laughs> the world has changed so much in such a short time that, you know, it's good to remind ourselves of the basic, simple things, you know, we don't need to have them sophisticated and so advanced and, you know, great. I mean, if, if, you, if you're good with technology, that's amazing, but, um, you know, keep some of that sim simple simplicity uh, in your life, because it's definitely gonna, gonna help you out. So talking about this, um, brings us a little bit to our next question. And what do you feel like, what do you feel is your current mission? Or, you know, what's, what's that really drive within you to, to bring out there? Yeah, I think right now, it's difficult to characterize it, right? And I think part of my journaling and my self-improvement journey centralizes around figuring out what my objective is. Mm. And it changes sometimes. But I would say Correct. most broadly, 
I really enjoy writing and eventually I want to write a book. So right now I see myself abstractly as, you know, a student, a younger person who's in a really important critical time to, to acquire, to learn. So I need to acquire as many experiences as I can. I need to read as much as I can. Uh, I need to go I'll put myself out there by, by meeting new people, by exploring this beautiful city while I'm here. Cause I'm only here for such a short time, right? I'm only here until the beginning of May. So I, and the very immediate amount of time I have would like to just not waste any of it um, doing things that just seem like trivial or, or um, unimportant to me. I mean, I wouldn't say that it's bad across the board to you know go on social media or anything like that, but it's it's better to be moderate and to spend more of your time doing um, the things that interest you most. And for me, I think lately I've more and more been gravitating towards a career in law. So I've been trying nice. to read more about admissions for law school. I'm starting to develop plans for my study routine to take the LSAT. I have also been doing a lot of research into like how I can apply what I've been learning with my language skills. So I'm looking into international law a bit. Um, I, I've got a few friends who speak Spanish, so I'm sort of making plans to start studying Spanish soon over the summer. So I, I know these are all very, you know, minute details, but I sort of just figuring out my career, um, yeah. my creative, my creative um, ambitions. So actually I reached out to an old high school friend of mine who is a very talented writer. Um, and I started asking for advice on writing from him and I actually sent him some writing I did, which is, you know, something that a couple of years ago I would have never done because I would have been embarrassed by it, but he gave me a lot of feedback and he was, he was really nice about it too. So, um, yeah, I just, I've been trying to maximize my, my experience socially, professionally, and creatively. Hmm. Okay. Fantastic. That sounds, yeah. uh, that sounds like a good, uh, good journey and trajectory to be, to be on right now. Um, I mean, many, many of us, you know, have, um, are, are even a step back uh, or, or behind and have not really taken, let us say, taken the lead of their lives and over their situation to really be looking and, you know, taking action. So, so it's great to hear that you're on your way and sounds, it sounds really very promising, uh, I should say. Thank you. Um, tell, tell us um, within your community, people around you, in your environment, who do you feel you're impacting today? Ooh, that's a really good question. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I feel like my impact right now is it's too like small, it's too immediate because I mean, I have a roommate, right? So I have my people in my program with me doing study abroad. I've got students in my class. So if I, I sort of expand out to the different communities, um, it, it ends up stopping kind of abruptly, right? So I've, I've sort of detached yeah. myself from my, my circle back in the States, but you know, I've sort of stayed connected in certain yes. ways. I, I've established certain friendships, relationships <clears throat> that allow me to have some sort of impact. Um, but yeah, that's, I don't know if I, I don't really know if I have enough of an impact yet. That's something I, I really want to do more of. I want to do more, mm. more volunteering. I, I want to also help people too, because I feel like what I've learned about myself and about productivity, about how to get myself out of bad places, I feel like could be useful to other people. So I think I, I try to write that down, right? I journal about it. I'd eventually like to translate some of those ideas into something longer form and then maybe eventually write a book, a uh, self-help sort of book. Um, I also, I like to write creatively, but I would also like to write something about, about self-improvement because I feel like if you are able to get yourself out of a really bad place, you sort of owe it to teach that to other people and to put that back out in the world. And I, so right now my, my impact is very local. I, I mean, I have a friend who seems to be going through a really tough time right now. And he was, he was really there for me a few months ago when I was going through a really tough time. So I've been you know, talking to him a lot, um, calling him, texting him and, and trying to give him advice when he asks for it and also just trying to be a uh a, you know guiding guiding hand a, a listening ear you know somebody that he can just talk to and i'll sit there and listen i'll just sponge in what he says and um and try to be accepting and 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 loving too you know mm -hmm. so showing yeah i feel like the the community i've impacted the most would just be like my my friends and family which is i've been trying to show more love to the people close to me Wow, that's uh, that's beautiful to hear, and especially the story of your friend 
we're going to send him if he's listening to us we're going to send him, send him some some good energy and strength um there's a lot a lot of yeah there's a lot of i would say um darkness in the world and and we're going through through really dark and tough times um and that's inevitable um i mean to a certain extent where we're able to really you know take massive action and and uh, you know find find our way um but it's definitely true that you we all do have a certain level of impact and it starts it starts from within it starts from really what is the impact you have on yourself and the more impact you have on yourself and the more you're changing and working on crafting on crafting yourself to become a better version the more this is going to duplicate and it's going to propagate around you so um that's that's maybe how i how i, how I see it uh, and how i live it um but it's it's great it's great that you're contributing in that way um a similar question a little bit twisted you know there's a an old saying we are all heroes some of us don't wear capes who are you a hero to well i don't know if i am so good as a hero but i try my best i try to, i try to be a hero to that the friend i mentioned because yes. he's been a hero to me right yeah. so i, I feel right. like i owe it to him to be a hero to him and i do i love him dearly he's a, a long-term nice. friend um i yeah there's uh there's somebody really special in my life so I, i'm trying to be a, a hero to her too Ooh. <laughs> um, i'm trying to be a hero too um i i would like to I, yeah i'd like to be more in touch with my family because i don't know if I'm, I'm anything like a hero to them and i i would like to be you know in the future i would like to be because they provided so much for me that i i owe it back to them um and even in small things too, I guess, like with my classmates, I'm trying to be more interactive. Like I'm usually a lone wolf with my academics, but I've been trying to like, you know, help other people out more. Um, even I've been considering like studying with friends, doing work with friends, which is not something I've ever really done before. Um, yeah, but uh, this is all very sort of like small scale stuff for now, at least. Um, but it's important, right? And as you said before, I've also really tried to be here to myself because uh, a few months ago, you know, I was, I was in an awful place where I was, you know, hardly, hardly getting up. Right. And I think that, you know, I, I'm happy we started with, you know, what gets you up in the morning, because I think getting up is, you know, that's the crucial point of the day. Right. Correct. And the part that that hurts me most is, you know, if, imagining myself just sort of sitting in bed until 2 or 3 p.m. Um, and if you want, if you are in a place like that, where even, even just getting up and sort of eating, sort of doing your basic tasks, if something like that is hard, then um, so it, it is you who has to like come out of that state, right? So you have to be, you have to love yourself. You have to be here else yourself. And I think a way you can do that is by sort of um, starting to write, starting to introspect about, you know, why, why is it that um, you dislike yourself? Why is it that you feel like you aren't worth it? And then um, start to, dissolve those those barriers right and start to realize that you are worth it and you are worth love and that it is possible to change the, the things that you don't like about yourself and that's maybe some of them aren't even really something that needs to be changed mm, very beautiful that you said dissolve these barriers and and change things that well uh, or, or just just be aware of things that don't really need to be changed i feel there's a lot of um guilt and there's a lot of like we carry a lot of burden um i mean um it's it's definitely it's it's easier said than done or it's either easier done than said i don't know which which way around but um usually when we lose someone whether it's a yeah. lover or a person in our lives or someone who really like we lose them you know physically as well on a, on a, um there's always that phase of kind of regrets in a way like have i done enough when they were here have i given enough when they were here and i was on the phone this morning with uh with someone who was kind of going through that phase and um, just yeah just giving ourselves the chance you know giving ourselves the permission to to continue you know yeah to, to, yeah that's the thing to continue that's right. Cause like, 
sometimes you can you can prevent yourself from having that feeling of of you didn't do enough but then sometimes what's in the past you generally do feel like you didn't do enough and maybe maybe you didn't at the time but that doesn't mean that forever you know you're doomed to be to be unhappy or that you deserve any sort of unhappiness for not doing enough back then the only way to remedy that and to make amends is by by being better now i mean i think specifically I, i've had long conversations with uh, friends of mine about sort of past past regrets they have in their life and i think like ultimately that i mean i have my fair share of regrets too but apply what you feel towards you know the person you lost the person that you miss um the chance that you miss to somebody that you have in your life now and that you love and and prevent you from feeling the same way about them you know because I, I think about death quite often. I think that mm. life is only a very, very short period of time. Um, frankly, I'm actually quite fearful of death. That's probably one of my more, more, more personal struggles and problems that I have to, I have to overcome, but it also motivates me. It's something that once again, is it gets me out, out of bed in the morning. Um, and I, I grapple with that sense that I only have, you know, a, a finite amount of time here, like you said. So what can I do to generate as much love as I can and so if I'm if I'm on that the if I'm on the edge about sending some a text or something or um maybe to a, to a loved one or to a friend and I'm feeling nervous about it or um maybe I, I want to start a personal project and I'm thinking like I don't know maybe I have all these these hang-ups I just sort of remind myself that well if you don't do it now you're never going to be able to do it and I think it's the same with sort of your loved ones and showing them the maximum amount of, of love well, if you don't do it now, are you going to regret it later? That's the question you have to ask yourself constantly when, when you choose to step away from something because of fear. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's on point there, Jared. Um, it's, it's really, uh, it's really deep. I mean, and, and at the same time, you know, it's, it's coming from a place of, uh, a place of experience and a place of, of really, you know, been there you know you've we've we're, we've all been there but it's it's like how how have we really you know went through it and um, and that's it we are we're responsible this is this is what i mentioned also in my in my call this morning i was like you we we are responsible of how we are today and how we choose you know how we kind of like um model it our our circumstances or perceive our circumstances in a way or another so i think that level of responsibility as well um is is really uh, powerful to allow mm -hmm. us also to 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 get through um th thank you so much for sharing jared um what mm -hmm. about do, did you want to add something oh uh, yeah I, yes, I, please, you're welcome. I also do um do you think that we we sort of generate our own experience do you think that we're like you know the the for the forefront the the forerunner of our own road show would you say that how much agency do you think people have over um their their emotions their attitudes about life and how can that's, they change that also thank you for asking jared that's a very profound and it's i think it's a really big question that's also split into several questions first of all i think it's it's really important to be aware of how you know we are currently what's our current situation and then know what we want to become or where we want to become the fact of having that level of awareness of let's say the as is and the to be that allows us already to have this this awareness this perception of what's going on and what i desire to attract in my life and then by that by means we are going to create bit by bit create that end result or that to be or that desire we're going to create it through action but through definitely several steps and methods and ways and techniques but first of all it has to start within the mind if you're able to see it then you're able to live it so if you that, that that's that's something that i kind of well apply to myself is that you know anything is possible anything is possible if you're really able to see it and then you know slowly work on it you know take the actions take the necessary measures say no when you need to say no so that you will 
you know, end up letting go of these blockages that are going to lead you to getting there. So basically, it's, it's just a matter of time. So first of all, it's time. Nothing happens overnight. You know, I'm not going to say tomorrow I'm going to be a 15, 20K, 20K per month, <laughs> yeah. you know, guy, and then right. it's going to happen overnight. No, there's, you know, there's a roadmap. There's a blueprint. There are all of these, you know, means and ways to get there. But um, are you really able to see it? And, and, and the more and more we're aware, the more we can feel if we're kind of at that level of mindset. Like I can, I can know, I think with, you know, with work, um, when I say work, it's inner work. I can tell myself when I'm thinking about an idea, I can tell myself if it's really clear within me, if it's really, if I can embody that idea, you see? It's, I'm not just, it's yeah. not just in my mind. I'm really feeling it within my whole body. It's, it's like I'm embodying that idea or that desire or that thing that I want to create. But if the mind is not 100%, if the mind has doubts, if the mind has, um, what do we call that? Like fleas, you know, like flaws or, or, or you know, areas mm -hmm. of, of uh, it's, it's not going to happen. We'll, we'll always find excuses. And I've found so many so many where you know i ended up then telling myself like stop just stop you know stop stop trying to to make something work when you're not really seeing it when you're not really believing in it so i think the first step is really to be aware and you've mentioned awareness many times in your stories and in your experiences being aware of your current situation your current circumstances and then being aware of what you desire do you really know what you want many and many and many people do not and that's where complaining comes and that's where you know right. we're, we're we're in that victim mode i'm like oh yeah my life did that covid did that you know my whomever did that you know we're always blaming and complaining no no see and and how right. how strong are we to really tell ourselves stop I think this is this is the beginning, you know, is to be able to really talk myself through this and tell myself, like, stop, just stop there, stop lying, stop pretending, stop faking, stop all of these, you know, and just really, yeah. what do you really want? This is where strength comes and appears. And as you said, and I admired what you said in the beginning of the of the episode you were talking about how your life can change so rapidly and yes it can i'm not saying overnight but i'm saying it can once you are ready to take massive action and taking massive action is start journaling go running drink water i don't know you do your thing uh, we, there are tons of techniques and tools you know but scrolling on tiktok and on instagram come on you know, that's not going to save you. Like, ah, anyhow, yeah. um, you, you've been amazing, uh, Jared. Um, we have one more, one more major question. Then we're going to jump to our yeah. last section. So what, what would you tell the world right now? What is your message? That's a really, that's a really good question. I have yeah. to think about that for a moment because take your a time, a weight take, to it, a lot of yes, happiness. Yeah. Take a moment because I'm sure you do have quite a lot to say. So what I want to say relates to the question I asked you about whether or not we generate our own experience. And I would say to other people that we certainly do. And of course it takes time, but ultimately you take the reins, right? If you want to take the reins, then you can. And so follow your own path, you know, be your own trail guide, be your own sage, be your own, your own master. Don't, don't be an apprentice to anyone, you know, only, only direct yourself, right? Take agency into your own hands because there are so many other people in the world that are innovating and they're creating novel experiences they're making new tech products they're creating companies they're doing all these fantastic things but you won't be able to achieve things like that if you just consume right 
And so ultimately the goal is to generate, right? It's to create novel things in the world. I think that that's sort of humanity's purpose is to create novel things. And so time that we spend just absorbing the, the beauty of others' creations is extremely valuable. But if that's all we do, then there isn't really a sense of meaning or purpose. So I would say that I, at least I derive my sense of meaning in what I can, what I can give, what I can create. So that's why I centralize on my focus on. And then another thing that I think we should all try to give more of is love. And I, I people mention this a lot, but especially I think for guys, um, they can be uncomfortable even just saying like, I love you to your friend. Um, I've been trying to say that more to my friends because I do love my friends and yeah. it's not, there's nothing like um, effeminate or emasculating about saying I love you. And it's something that a lot of like guys my age, they just don't do it. And um, mm. it can be nice to show a little bit of compassion. It can be nice to, to reach out to somebody. And so um, also I, I would say um, figure out, you know, what you fear and go there, right? Figure out what, what you're afraid of and live there. Um, visit it because getting comfortable with chaos and uncertainty means growth. It means becoming stronger. It means becoming more wise, more passionate, more bold, and more capable of changing your life. Um, and my, my last message is write, write, write every day. Write right. for five minutes every day in a journal about what you're thinking. And then just keep that habit up, something really simple, and you'll be able to see remarkable change in yourself and you'll you'll preserve it for posterity's sake you'll be able to look at that in a couple of years from now and think you know how far have i come and and just be astonished by where you were then and you know where you are now true 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 beautiful jared thank you so much for sharing uh, a lot of messages there and and they're all very inspiring uh, I should say, I mean, I mean, uh, there is a simplicity to them, but at the same time, there's a lot of power if you're able to apply uh, these these messages or you know live in in that way. Um, let me see. There was something that really um, really got got me uh, got me thinking twice. Uh, I think it was the second second message. Was it? What was that? Just before the last one. I'm, I'm not sure of the order. Do you remember yeah. anything about? <laughs> yeah. So I said yeah. something about creating novelty, like taking the reins for your own experience, yes. not having like a master, sort of being your own master. Right. And then, um, so that's yes. all sort of related um, uh, between that and journaling your thoughts, loving others, loving your loving friends. Loving others, yes. Friends that you yes. Love them. yes, 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 yes. Especially, yes. yeah, especially if you're a young Same. man, it's all exactly. that to your friends. Same. What else, what else did I say? <laughs> expressing, expressing yeah. your love. I think this is, that's something create. that, you know, we all, yeah, yeah create, express your create love. Create instead of consume, yeah. Create instead of consume. Mm -hmm. Those two, I think, expressing your love yeah. and creating, creating um, more than consuming mm -hmm. or just having that balance. I think these are really, 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 really important. Oh, so, oh, I remember the other thing I said. It was like, find your fear and live there. Was yes. that it? Yeah, yeah that also, was the they're, yeah. They're, all, they're all excellent, so... <laughs> Good job. I don't know which one you're thinking about specifically, well, but well, uh, then then I think we're we're really uh, we're really uh, there. All of them is just <laughs> I was I was I was happy to kind of like re uh, combine them again, you know, re-list yeah. them. So uh, true, yeah, true message there. I hope people listening and watching, if you're still there, um, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time. I hope you're taking notes, and I hope you're journaling. And um, we're about to get to our last section. Jared, this is our fast cues. So basically Ooh. you have one word or one sentence to answer each question. Are you ready? I guess, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Okay, <laughs> so what is the meaning of life? Novelty. Novelty, that's a good one. We are put on this earth for what reason? Generate novelty and love others. Okay, love others. Yeah. What is destiny? Having a vision of how you want the world to be and stopping at nothing to create it. Oof, that's a very uh, good approach there. Okay. What is true happiness? 
acceptance of one's conditions, acceptance of what must happen and control over what can be changed. Acceptance and control. Oof, okay. Although acceptance and control, they're a little bit. Uh... <laughs> yeah. It's a little hard to explain what I mean there in yeah, one yeah. sentence. I didn't do it with enough nuance, but accepting what, accepting what has to happen and then changing what can be changed, right? What so, needs to be. What yes. needs to be. Mm. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Do you, um, do you believe in, in, um, in reincarnation or in an afterlife or? I don't know. I, I would like yeah. it to be true. Okay. I just don't know. Okay. Yeah. You would like it. That's, that's good. Um, yeah. What is true mindfulness? Um, letting your, your overseeing mind, the system two of your brain, this is something we talked about in our conversation originally, take the reins and daily life. So being conscious of your actions and not being an autopilot. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That, that makes sense. What does, what does it mean to be present? I think presence means that you're not thinking when you're talking or doing something else. You don't have the inner voice going on. So you're really there you're listening or doing mm. in that exact moment with full attention. You're in the flow state. Beautiful. And how would you describe God? Um, oh, that's a, that's a really good one. Is that the last one? <laughs> that's the last one, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, mysteriously beautiful. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Because, yeah. I, I'd like to sort of elaborate on that one just because I it, feel yeah. like... Go for it, sure, 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 like, sure. At least God to me, I, I see God not necessarily as being one thing or the other in one sort of tradition. I wouldn't really describe myself sort of as a religious person either. I, I fit more into sort of the agnostic frame, but I do think I have a, an appreciation and a love for God, even though I can't ultimately like be convinced one way or the other at the moment if God exists. But I do think that like um, I see sort of the, the connectivity and, and um, giving in to your destiny, right? Like following your dreams as some sort of a manifestation of your own, your own, your own sort of God, right? So when you listen to your mind and you listen to your desires and you follow them with your full passion, then you're sort of following the God that that is within you, right? And it can be mysteriously beautiful because sometimes um, things happen in your life and you can be in really terrible conditions and you can, it can have a very hard time finding out like why, you know, life is so beautiful, why you should get up. But then, you know, when you come out of that state, you realize that you learned a lot. So what actually happened was incredibly valuable, even though it was hard in the moment. So um, at least for me, I've, I've, I'm grateful for my struggles, right? I'm grateful for the, the misery that I've endured in my life because I, it's made me who I am today. And it's made me a lot stronger and so that's why i think you know god is mysteriously beautiful not not just plainly so yeah. that's great wow good good answer there jared thank you so much for elaborating as well definitely was um truly truly more than just two words um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm sorry <laughs> no, no, no 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 don't don't be uh, i enjoyed it um so yeah you've that was our fast, fast cue section. And, and we still have one final bonus question. Mm. And in this, uh, I would ask you, what, what question have I not really asked or something that you would like to discuss further before we end our episode? Yeah. Um... What do you fear most? I think that's a really good question. Ooh. That's something I'd like to talk about with, it, with you because you're very spiritually minded and the wise guy. So I want to hear your opinions on it because my, my answer to that question is death. And I'm not really sure how I can get past mm. that fear. It sort of, it holds me up from achieving, I think, true happiness because I worry about, you know, my experience ending. I want to experience so many beautiful things. And I enjoy being alive so much that I, I hate to think about the fact that it will end, even if it does motivate me and make things feel you know more precious yeah beautiful so uh i guess you're expecting an answer from me 
Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I would love to share with you yeah. and with people listening and watching. It's it's very interesting. That question came to me uh, a few years ago, just before I I quit my my life in Paris. I mean, I you, you, I told you my story, and some some for some people they they know already. Like I've I've had that turning point as well. Uh, three two three years ago when I quit my job, my life in Paris, everything, and I went on a on a long trip, you know, on a long voyage. And just before taking these decisions, you know, I, I had that question like coming back and back again because I got to that point where nothing, you know, I was fearing nothing. Mm -hmm. And and it it was like, what what is there, you know, what is something that I'm, you know, that that I would fear that that would kind of stimulate me in a way to do something, you know? Um, so I came to a realization that what I fear most is fear itself. And for me, that has always, that has still been the case. Today, um, if I look at myself, if I really connect with myself, fear is, for me, my fear is fear itself. My fear is being yeah. in fear. Because yeah, I know it yeah. destroys you if you're really in fear for a long time. It handicaps you. Of course, it's going to protect you in a way or another for a certain, if you're really aware of it, it will protect you. However, if, if you're constantly living in fear, then you're not living in love. And this is where you're going you're gonna to lose a lot of your life just being in fear so for me yeah my biggest fear is fear itself and thank you for asking and it's it's yeah. it's a uh, yeah it's it's really um it's a pleasure for me to uh to talk about this um so yeah thank you thank you for sharing do you have any advice on how you can get over your fears specifically like the fear of fear itself or the fear of death absolutely or related ideas yeah yes for sure i had um so i did release an episode uh, on that um, a few weeks ago and it was oh, nice. it was the third it was the third tip for having a more exciting and a more productive 2022 is is what are your fears and why is it what are your fears first of all awareness starting with awareness knowing what your fears are so the fact that you know now this this i would say this conversation is between us or we're talking specifically about one certain case, what are the ways to get through a certain fear is first of all, to put light on it and to look at it and then to really go deeper within and to understand where it's coming from. There's a story, there's a source, there's a root there that lies within each and every one of us. Fear of death that's been in humanity and in species for ever, you know, but there's definitely something a little bit more present within some of us than with others. So really, first of all, sh put some light on it, understand, be aware that you have that fear, then try to really go back. I always ask people to go back, go back to that first time where you felt that, how how old were you, you know, how young were you actually when this happened for the first time? Did, did you have any, any experience? Did you go through any accident? Did you go through any, you know, life death experience? You know, th those, the, the, that type of really resonance that will allow you really to go deeper into your analysis. And then, you know, just by doing that, you're gonna become friends, friends. You're going to make friends with that fear. So your fears are going to become your allies instead of being your enemies, instead of being, you know, blocking you, they're going to become your friends. The goal is really not to avoid or not to be, the, the, the goal is not being not fearful. The goal is being fearful, but then being friends with these fears. And then mm -hmm. they're going to become, basically, they're going to turn into a strength that you have instead of, you know, see what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah I do, yeah. Yeah, so basically, it's, it's a matter really of, once again, introspection, once again, really going within, you know, um, death is inevitable. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we're never gonna, you know, we're all here for a finite time. We've said that more than once in, in this episode. But then also remember that, and I've, I've listened to that quote, I think it was, it was yesterday, you know, gods envy us because we, we, we have a finite time. Yeah. Because we, 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 we die, because we, we, you know, deteriorate. And just the fact that you can really embrace that, that um, experience of deteriorating because we're at the end we're you know we're a body we're made of of bone and flesh and and skin and this this is all going to deteriorate with time so if you're able to really embrace that and to allow yourself and accept yourself well then you're living a, a happy i think good life i think so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah oh so yeah just I, um, I mean, yeah thank you please please so yeah just embrace it embrace it embrace the you know the 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 beginning the introduction the plot and all the chapters and then you know the the ending and the way i mean i see my life as a book i see my life as a script and that's yeah that's how i live it so um it's good it's good it's good to be aware of these things so um yeah i had such a great time with you jared and i'm sure our listeners and people who are watching are definitely full of ideas and i hope you're journaling i hope everyone (laughs) is journaling by now because once again this is gonna allow you to step up i think it would allow you really to step up so Guys, um, wherever you're connecting from, thank you again for being here. If you haven't subscribed, do it, uh, share it, leave a comment, send us an email. I'm going to share also Jared's uh, contact information. Jared, how, how do people connect with you? Yeah, sure. Um, if you want to reach out to me, uh, I, have, I have an Instagram account. If you follow me there and message me. I always message back. I love to talk about any sort of spiritual things, philosophy, literature. So I'll, it's jared.g.deacon. Um, and on Instagram, you can find me. And that's pretty much the only social media I really re- respond well on. I don't, I'm not so connected on the others, but that's, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'll definitely tag, uh, I'll definitely tag Jared and, um, yeah, definitely feel free to connect with him. He's He's got many more ideas and stories to share. I'm sure we're just limited in the amount of time for now. Thank you again, Jared. <laughs> Thanks for everyone watching, whether it's day or night. Have a good day. Have a good night and see you next week. Yeah, thank you all. Have a nice time. <laughs>